Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this. I got the idea from a swap I received when I went on the stamping up incentive trip to Thailand um, in July. The swap that I received was this and it was made by Letitia, I'm going to show you her name because I probably won't be able to say it correctly. Boyd of A. Um, but when I got back I did a video and I shared my swaps um, on YouTube. Somebody said to me would I show how this was made. So that's what today's video is going to be. The only piece of cardstock you're going to need is a piece of our shimmery white which measures six and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches which is 15.9 centimeters by 10.9 centimeters. So to start off with we're going to do some scoring. Um, let me see, can I see what I've done with yes, my scoring tool? Right, if you put your cardstock in first on the six and a quarter length side and you need to score it at two inches, four inches and six inches, which is 5.1 centimetres, 10.2 centimetres and 15.3 centimetres. And then if you turn that 90 degrees anti-clockwise, so you have your quarter of an inch score up at the top there. And then you need to score at 2 inches and 4 inches, which is 5.1 by 10.2 centimetres. Oops, I jumped the tracks there. Um, does that one matter? No, I think that piece gets cut off, so that's okay. That was lucky. Right, so we're going to do some cutting first. Um, let's take my paper snips. And first of all, I'm going to work on the side down here where I have the long quarter of an inch strip. And I'm going to cut off the first oblong and the second oblong and just that tiny tiny little square in the corner. Okay, so just a nice straight line down the centre until you come to the second score line and then cut that off and then onto the third score line straight turn it straight so that little square comes off and then cut up on the next score line up to the second score line turn it and cut on the second score line, this is the second one from this side, you cut up to that first score line and then we're going to cut up on the next score line and across there so that we cut this square out Should finish up with a piece that looks like that. This really is a very very delightfully easy project. Um, I'm just surprised that um, the amount of work Letitia must have put into this because to do the swaps for Thailand we had to make 26 of them. Um, so that was a lot of work 
really appreciate it. It was lovely. Thank you, Letitia. Um, right, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to round this corner and then we need to round this corner. And it's not a complete, it doesn't finish up as a complete circle, um, which was what the real challenge was when I was um, trying to copy what Letitia had done. Um, I'm not quite sure what she has used, but what I have used is this tin lid. And what you need to do is if you take a pencil that's got a nice sharp point to it, which I did have here a moment ago because I sharpened it to make sure that it was nice and sharp. Um, oh, here it is. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our curve to go from there, which is the end of this score line. And we're going to get it to come about sixteenth of an inch underneath there. Okay, so we're going to start from the edge of this score line here and we're going to get it to come over here. Now in, I have done um, three of these so far and all of them I've had to trim it again afterwards which is why I say it's not a proper circle. So let me just bring this down as low as I can. So I'm lining this one up to the edge. In fact, if I turn that sideways, does that make it easier for you to see? Or if I do it this way? Probably this way you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise my hand gets in my way. Okay, so I have my pencil on that score line. I'm going to move my tin lid so it's up on that mark. Let's see if I can pull this so that you can see it. Uh, I don't think you can because of the shadow, but that's where the mark is. So if I just draw around here and then show you what I've done. Okay, see how it's come about a sixteenth of an inch down? Now I'm going to do the same round here. I'm going to start from that corner where the score line comes and I'm going to come to in about one sixteenth of an inch. So if I put my pencil there, let's just draw my, my mark first. Right, okay, so, oops, that's where that's going to be. Move my lid. Okay, so I'm not sure you can see that. Um, where have we gone? There we go. I think that's close enough. Right, now we're going to cut on those two curved lines. Now when we come to the top it should just automatically take your scissors right to the edge. And then this one. There we go. Right. Just going to remove my pencil marks. And the stamp set that I'm using is called this little piggy and it's this one here. When I first started doing my first one of these, um, because the sentiments are attached to the actual stamp with the image of the pig, I was covering up the sentiment with tape, inking it, taking the tape off and then stamping and I was doing that to all of them um, but I have to say I did get a bit frustrated keep doing that and I took the plunge and I have cut all of the 
sentiments off. And I must warn you, if you decide to do that, you will make the guarantee that you have with stamping up null and void because you have effectively damaged the stamps yourself. Um, it's a risk that you take um, and normally I wouldn't try and detract you from doing it but these sentiments are really quite close to the actual in image so it, it wasn't easy for me to cut them off um, so I really would think twice about doing it. Um, it obviously has made my life a lot easier and I'm glad I've done it um, but I'm just saying it's not without risk. Right, so I have here a sheet which tells me what stamps I do where um, so I don't make any mistakes. I will put a copy of that on my blog so that you can follow that if you find it easier. I'll try and do it as a PDF so that you can download it. Um, but I'm not the brightest spark when it comes to technology. Right, so first of all I'm going to take the pig with the flower and I'm going to do all of this stamping using my basic black archival ink. Let's put that that side. Now I'm going to do this so that the bottom of my stamp is more or less on that score line there. good and then above him it says this little piggy let's bring this down a bit that's okay and then here I've got loves you I really have been following um, exactly what Letitia has done. I haven't changed it. Possibly the colours, but apart from that. Um, and also on Letitia's one here, I don't know if you can see, but on the inside she's got the little dog. Yeah. And the little dog comes from the stamp set called Bike Ride, which I've forgotten to bring over with me. Um, but it's a photopolymer stamp and it's a two-step stamp set as well. Okay, so that's that side. Now I'm going to turn it over and on this double piece here I'm going to have the flying pig. Okay, let me bring it down again. Most of it I'm going to have in the central square there with a little bit coming into the curved part. Yes, that's good. And we've got hogs and kisses here. Let's make sure I've got that up the right way. Okay. There we go. Um, turn it around and then we've got the pig that's looking to the side. Let me just get a scrap of paper because I'm going to stamp this one half on, half off. this one. Now this one is the one that I normally get crooked. Right, let's see what we can do. That's not bad. Just about got it on there though. 
Now to colour this I'm going to do it part with marker pens, part with um, aqua painter and part with um, daubers. So I'm going to do the um, aqua pens first. There are two ways of using these. Um, one is to what I'd regard as a proper way and that is what you do is you fill the reservoir here up with tap water so that the water flows through straight down into the brush. I find that I can't control the water properly so what I do is I have a little pot of, of water here. Let me just show you. Okay. Right, so what I do is I wet my brush. Let's see, which one am I doing first? I'm going to do the pig with the flower. Now I'm just going to make him wet all over. This is part of the reason why I've used the shimmery white paper cardstock because it takes um, this water colouring very, very well. You could also use the um, uh, watercolour paper as well. Right, now I'm going to be using pink pirouette and I'm just squeezing some ink into the lid. Obviously this is still quite wet because I have been using it. So now that I'm picking up just a very, very small amount of colour and going on to the wet cardstock here, it goes on really very easily. And it goes on very nice and light as well because I don't want any heavy colouring. I will come over this um, once I've given it a bit of a chance to dry and go over the hooves and the snout using um, a marker pen just to give it a little bit more definition. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for him there. I will come back to the dog. Um, now I'm going to do this pig and again I've wet my brush and I'm going to just paint over the pig. As you see, I'm not being totally precise with this. I'm just taking more colour. Pick up some more, I'm running out. Doing it like this, you must remember to every now and again dip the pen into uh, the water. I think I'll just about get past with doing the wings. The wings I let go by um, letting them be a lighter pink. Um, my imagination tells me that the, the wings are probably translucent. Right, now I'm going to do the last pig. I've wet my brush again. Dabbed it off so it's not too wet. And then get my pink again, spread it all out because I don't want it dark. And there we go. So that's the pink. I haven't worried about the uh, tails because I can go with my marker pen for that. Now I'm going to do some of the these little bits here, the bumpy bits, I see that as pebbles so that should be a brownie colour. There's some on this side and on the other side so I'll just do that bit. I'm using soft suede for this. My pen felt, uh, my brush felt a bit dry there. Okay, so I'm just going to do some brown along there. 
again I will come along with my marker pen and I will do some green strands of grass there we go that's okay so just I should have bought some um, kitchen roll with me to mop this off with but never mind right now we're going to do some sky and for this I'm going to use soft sky Okay, make sure I've got some squeezed into the lid. I didn't do very well there, did I? Let's try that again. I think I'm just trying to be a bit too gentle with this. made any difference whatsoever. I wonder if my pad is too dry. Right, let's have a look, see how we get on with this. Now all I'm going to do is just little areas of blue here and there. In fact I might top up here with the um, my blue dauber. Okay, I'm just lifting up a bit of colour from the actual ink pad, taking it down here. You just have to be careful that it's not going to come up too blue. That's more like it. Okay, let's put some up here. This one needs quite a bit because he's flying. Might as well go down to that one because that's Sky. He's upside down. from this point of view. Let's give him a little bit more. Okay. Yep, that's all right. Yep, I'm happy with that. And then I need some grass, but all the grass I tend to do with um, my dauber. So let me colour the um, dog and for that I'm going to use crumb cake for the actual dog himself. fine and then with the uh, his little scarf I'm going to do this between marina mist and also soft sky Also the flower, which I'm doing in Berry Burst. And doing it all this way round, while I'm doing all these other bits and pieces, the water that I've been using is drying. Okay, got that. And we have one leaf. Anything else? It's just about the pink pirouette to give the definition on the pig. So I'm going to 
give him a darker snout, darker hooves, and of course the tail. Oh, I'm not forgetting his ear as well, giving some shadow there. Let's turn over with the other one. We do his snout. His ear, his hooves, and tail. And then this one. Now I think all I need to do is the grass, so I'm going to bring my Pear Pizzazz dauber, my very well worn dauber, oh this reminds me that I haven't done the grass on this bit here on either side. Now again, like the water colouring, I'm not going for perfection here. If you want, you could use a couple of different greens in here. Okay, so there's that one. We do the reverse of this. Obviously, if you've got your favourite way of doing your colouring, go for it. This is just uh, suggestions. Right, so that's fine. And then I'm just going to use this for my grass. It's just got some little strands here. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of green like that. And the same on this side. Okay, I think I've remembered everything. Let's check this. Um, on one of these, um, there were some um, clouds, was it? Yes, it was Letitia. She used clouds, didn't she? Let me just add a couple here. So we can have one there. Um, one above here, God that was close, <laughs> nearly put it on his nose, right and in here, no, none in there, that's fine, in fact I'm going to do one there, just because I can, there we go, in fact, let's close that, So the last thing we need to do before we can actually put this together is we need to cut the grass and all I'm going to do is just straight little snips all the way along. I did try using my um, oh the scissors that have got like the four blades on them but I found that once I'd done that I had to go back again and I could get an extra two cuts on each cut of those scissors and I found it was just as quick to finish up doing it like this at least this way I get them all nice and close to each other and also I've only done mine a quarter of an inch on the swap there uh, half an inch It doesn't take too long. Bit of patience, I agree. Oops.
Now we need to fold, um, if I have my bone folder here somewhere, I have my ruler which I will need and there's my bone folder. Right, to fold the grass I use this because it's got quite a sharp edge here and I just line that onto the fold line and then bring that up and that just folds out really nicely and then I do the side bit again. Okay, so then that can be folded up. And then I'm going to fold on the other lines. And then that one. Okay, now the um, pig, this is the same as the one that Letitia had. We uh, went on the internet to find it. I will put the details in the box below. Um, beautiful little thing this is. Um, what I do to stand him on there is I just put one glue dot on each foot. But for the skirt, I'm not going to give a sewing lesson. <laughs> I would give the real... Uh, needle women out there um, a shock if they could see how I do mine but what I did was I took a piece of our um, Knight of Navy gingham ribbon this is six and a half inches yes and I just folded it over like that and then I just did a couple of stitches to hold that in place and then I did a little running stitch all the way round and to get lots and lots of gathering like that I went down by every blue one and up by the white one so as I came over my stitch was going over the white so I haven't on the inside it's got a white stitch going over blue which makes it a bit more obvious um, but I wanted to conceal it so okay so it's up where the blue meets the white and then you go across over the white and then down. You could decide you're not going to do stitches as small as that because they are very very small and just scoot along which is fine. It will work just as nicely and then once you've done that that just oh, let's just take his label off and then you'll find that that will just slip on really nicely over his back legs and he's ready to go on here. The acetate box is one of our, um, what are we calling them? Clear tiny treat boxes. They come in a pack of 16 and when you take them out of the box you will find that it's got um, a plastic wrapper over it. So first of all you take that off And then you just fold all of these on the fold lines. And you will find that if you give it a little crease, it almost like pops into place. And then you do the side bits, pull them back up again, otherwise you're not going to get your bits in there. And then this one up here. That one. and then do all the four on the bottom and the way you get this to all click together in place let's just do this last one right okay so first of all you put this one down first um, let me see if I've got something dark here let's see if you can see this Oh, not very easily, but as it's moving you can see it's the one with the little cut out there makes it look a bit like a bridge so that one goes down first and then you put the two side ones down that have got the little lip like that you got one of those that side and one that side 
so that's got to go on there you can put those down next so it hooks under hoping you can see this yes and then the last one is you put that flap there so that it goes in that slit down there and what you can do is just bend it back a little bit give it a push and it will all click into place okay they really are very very easy to do now to get our little piglet settled in I'm going to put the grass piece down first and I'm going to use my um, scoring tool just to get this to push down nicely and then that piece over there if you find that it keeps coming forward like this what you can do is if you retrieve it and then just bend it so uh, which way yes bend it like that so that this way it curls inwards and that should help it stay in place yes that's right okay so that's staying there nicely and I'm going to get my glue dots and just put one foot on at a time and it should lift the glue dot that's it, I've got three come on, that's it, I've got four and then just make sure you have your skirt whichever way you want it. I've got the seam that I made at the bottom and then I'm just going to pop a little piglet down. Oh no, 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 don't do that. Whatever you do, don't allow your glue dot to hook onto the side of your box. It can be very messy. I was very lucky there. Right, let's put that back on his foot and then stand him down inside, give him a press so that the feet really press the glue dots down make sure you've got the skirt where you want it to be and then fold these two over oh no sorry, fold that one down first and then fold those two over and then put that in. Now I can see, and this has happened on all of mine so far, that this is too big. It's coming out over the edge. So I'm not going to be able to close that. What I do is I lift this and I am just going to cut a slither off of there. If I climb my scissors. Okay. So I'm just going to cut. Let me bring this close to you. Right, let me see what I'm doing first and I'll make sure that I'm in camera right in there. That's a bit of a large amount to cut off there, but rather than spending too long. And then as you, I think as you come round just curve it very, very slightly. Okay, so that's how much I've cut off. And then I did that little bit to straighten it up a bit okay so now yes that's good so that's now going in perfectly again once you've done that and you're fa you're happy it's all fine if now you find that it's sinking down a little bit like that one is okay do what you did with it before and that is just get it to bend up very slightly
Oh, come on. There we go. That could still do with a bit being cut off. Now let's try that again. If you do this, do a little bit at a time and come back and do a second bit rather than doing one large bit and find that you've cut too much off. I mean that looks alright, in fact it looked right last time but it obviously wasn't. Oh that's better, much much better. Okay, so that's sitting there nicely. But it would be if that was closing down alright. Okay, see that it's this that's coming up and over. But there we go, there's today's project. I hope you like this and really hope you give it a try. Um, that was another one that I did and that one I used um, Sahara sand cardstock but I felt it made it too dark. Um, you can see how different that is. The shimmery white looks really lovely. So that's my one and this is the one made by Letitia. Unfortunately I don't have any contact details um, for Letitia. If anybody, in fact if you're watching Letitia or if anybody um, knows Letitia, if they can give me um, her website details or something and I'll be more than happy to put the details in the box below um, so um, my subscribers can check her out. Um, it's such a beautiful piece of um, piece of work. This is really lovely. Many thanks for joining me today. Uh, as I say, I hope you decide to give this a try. Um, if you would like to purchase any of the products that are featured here today, um, please click on the link in the box below. That will take you to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. I will put a link for where I bought the little piggies from in the box below. If you've enjoyed my video and you would like to see more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. As well as my the link to my shop being in the bottom below and the link to the piggy shop, um, I will also put the measurements and where you need to score and the products that I've used. They'll all be in the box below as well. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!